I want to start with something you said to me literally the day after the Sopranos finale aired, because it's really interesting in the context of, of this movie. I asked, were you ever thinking about making a movie? And back then, you said an idea could pop into my head where I would go, wow, that would make a great movie, but I doubt it. So I'm wondering at what point the idea popped into your head that made you go, okay, this is going to be a great movie. In the second season of the show, I think, the Writers Guild arranged for me to be interviewed by Tom Fontana. I don't get it, but uh, two, one writer interviews another. And during that interview, Tom said he thought it would be interesting to do a story in Newark in the old days uh, about Johnny and Junior. And that appealed to me because uh, my mother comes from Newark in, at that time. My parents met in Newark at that time. And so I used to go down to the Italian section of Newark with my mother. Uh, every Saturday she dragged me down there while she shopped for uh, Italian food, groceries and stuff. So yeah, that kind of appealed to me. And I never forgot it. I was also inter always interested in the Newark riots. I had wanted to make a, in, in film, film school or right after, I wanted to make a movie about uh, four guys who e avoid the draft by joining the reserves. Yeah. And they get sent in a tank into the Newark riots. <laughs> um, and it changes their life. Uh, but I never did it. But anyway, all those things sort of combined into an interest in Newark for me. I felt I had some esprit of the place or something. What really happened was Toby Emmerich, who was the head of New Line at the time, from the very beginning, in the early 2000s, kept pursuing me to do a Sopranos movie. And then finally, uh, he was head of Warner Brothers, and I had done something that, I had done a, a miniseries script for HBO, which they wanted to do, but on a cheesy budget. And uh, I refused to do that, and I turned that down. And so this came along, and I thought, okay, that was it. You're very protective of the legacy of the show. Is that fair to say? Yeah. All right. So, you know, because people have asked me since this was announced, well, why is he doing this? And my response mm -hmm. has always been, David cares about the show. He wouldn't do it if he didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, absolutely. The idea of prequel never entered my head. But then I remember what Tom said, and then that made me think of the young Junior and the young Johnny, and that's absolutely true. No, I wouldn't do it. But. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, in that same conversation back after the finale, you've specifically said many of your favorite moments on the show were either depicting the good old days or just people talking about the good old days, yeah. mm -hmm. but when Tony was a kid. Right. So what, what beyond your own sort of experience in your family, what, what about that period appealed to you? Well, it was before the Rico statutes. And it was when um, mobsters used to dress well. Yeah. Before track suits and all that. And I guess that was maybe the highlight of the mob in those days. Before, before drugs and before Rico statues. Yeah, I mean, Tony in the first episode says, I came in at the end. And now, right. You're, right. now you're in the glory days. So right. how different was it writing about the glory days versus sort of the pathetic scraps that Tony and his guys had to live on. Well, we didn't go, you know, we didn't go as far, we didn't have as much time. It wasn't really that different, just in my view, a little bit less profanity. I, I figured, as I recall those days, not, not my age, when I was 18, you know, in the beginning of the 60s, everything was fuck, 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 fuck. But um, I think people have, that older generation didn't use that much profanity. That's very simple. Sure.